Well, in the middle of the 19th century, Dorking was a very typical market town. It was on the small side. It had two markets, one in the high street uh, for livestock and uh, one in South Street for poultry. The main streets in Dorking were essentially those that we have now. At the turn of the half century, there, was, uh, there were two schools, St. Martin's School and the Powell Cordroy School. In the 1860s, St. Paul's School was added to those. St. Paul's School has been educating the children of Dorking for 150 years, and over this time, thousands of pupils have passed through the doors. Not surprisingly, games played in the playground are often much better remembered than anything learnt in class. One of the games, um, which is really um, based on leapfrog, but we never called it leapfrog. We had a name for it called Diggy Diggy Dagtail. Why or where that came from, I've no idea. Where a half a dozen of you actually bent down and the other team would try and jump on your backs. But of course, when the school playground was wet, you did get rather dirty. At the start of the Second World War, part of the school field was dug up to build shelters to protect the children. We had six air raid shelters. Um, I suppose they must have been up to 20 feet long. They each uh, were half buried. The bottom ones were for the infants and these were for the uh, higher classes. And the top class always had this one just where we're standing at the present moment. The shelters at St Paul's have long been removed, but those at Limpsfield Common, now owned by the National Trust, are exactly like the ones they used to have at the school. We went down several steps, and I think we had slatted seats either side. We all faced each other. Concrete surrounding us, it was very cold when you leaned back. There wasn't enough light really to do anything, to lessons or things like that. Well, I suppose we did. I think the teacher read to us, but um, I don't remember doing much down there. After the war, everyone was determined to get life back to normal, and an event to help the country to do this was the Olympic Games in 1948. The Olympic torch came through the town very early in the morning for the 1948 Olympics. I mean, 20 years ago, we would have probably thought that we would never see the Olympic Games again in this country. It didn't really register with, with me as some great event. Uh, it was just the fact that everybody wanted to see the man carrying the Olympic torch through the town. <laughs> Ted Henton carried the torch because he was a prominent member of St Paul's Athletic Club. I was living at that time in the Dorking Halls, so I was on the roof taking a photograph of the torch coming along in front of the what was then the Embassy Cinema, as my good friend staying with me was down on the road taking the same um, picture. The town was absolutely packed with people from the White Horse right across the road to Woolworths and there were so many people there that it stopped them from uh, running for a little while while they cleared the way. But um, I can remember seeing the torch and I can remember the, the man and I can I, I actually recall seeing him for years and years afterwards in Dorking, uh, until sort of recent years. And I knew, because I used to say sometimes to, to my grandchildren or to my wife, oh, that was the man that carried the Olympic torch through the town. For all, memories of time at St Paul's are very special. I really enjoyed my uh, time at St Paul's. I think that's one of the, the periods in your life, that sort of age period when you tend to remember a lot of things and they stick with you for the rest of your life. <laughs>